So sometimes we need to survey in an area where the boundaries or the corners of the job have significantly different scale factors than we can estimate with one corner. Here's an example. It's not horrible, but it'll serve as a general idea. Um, I've got four corners of section 14 here, and the scale factors vary as shown on the map. I've actually got them listed here, and you can see the difference between grid and ground in one mile varies between 0.978 and 1.074, so slightly less than a tenth. There's not a lot of elevation change on this job. Um, SURFC makes it fairly easy to find an average scale factor. So in this video, I'd like to calculate an average scale factor and then align a customized state plane or a modified state plane so that the um, basis of bearings is the east line of the section at the at a ground distances for the average of the four corners. So I think the first thing to do is to store the four corners of the section into a new job. And I've got a new job here. Uh, the job is Utah Central, which is the default zone. So we'll go to Survey, Store Points. And let's store the southeast corner. That's point number one. And I'll go to the corner and store that as number two. And then store the northwest corner. Point number three. And finally, store the southwest corner as number four. Now, I think in other videos I've shown how to calculate a scale factor for a point. The easiest way is to stand at a point. We'll go over to the southeast corner and go to equipment and then localization. And then on the GPS tab, we can click the grid to ground and push the read GPS button, and we'll get a combined scale factor for wherever we're at with the GPS receiver. In this case, I want to do something a little bit more special. I'm going to push the calculator button, and I'm going to go to average points, and I'll click the sigma over n button, and I'll just give it the range of points that I want to use, 1 to 4 the enter button. Surf C will import all four of those points and calculate scale factors for them all. So the average combined scale factor is 1.000196. That looks pretty good. Um, this button up here that's got a picture of a disk drive on it, if you push this button, it'll actually store a new point and that point's name will be 5 average point. Got it stored. So, we'll accept this scale factor. And then I would like to make a modified state plane zone. So I'm going to accept the scale factor here. I'm going to go back to the main menu. I recommend any time you make changes on the GPS or the points tab that you exit all the way to the main menu and then come back in. So we're back at the main menu. Click on localization to return. We're going to go to the points tab. And I'm going to add the southeast corner of the section. Now the coordinates for the southeast corner, I want them to match the state plane coordinates for the southeast corner, but I'm going to truncate off the most significant digits. Click on add. Now the if I click in 1 here, I'll get the state plane coordinates for this corner. And what I'd like to do is just remove all but the last four significant digits from the easting and the northing. Click on the green check mark. What are the GPS coordinates at this point? Well, I don't know, but they're in the raw file under point number 1. So, I've got my first control point here. Let's add the second point, which is going to make the basis of bearings match. I'll click on Add, and the second point is the northeast corner. That was stored as point number two. Um, again, I'm 
but I want it to be a zero bearing. So I'm going to put in one here. I need to make the easting exactly match the northing. I need to make the easting exactly match the southeast corner. So that'll make the grid bearing between the two be zero. And I'd like the northing to be about a mile. So I'll take the northing for point number one and I'll add 5280. Probably need to add it though. Great. And I'll click the green check mark. Now the GPS coordinates for this northern point are stored in the raw file as point number two, so I'll recall that. The project scale is not one. Do you wish to set it to one? No. I want to keep the scale factor. So I'm going to click on no. So I'll click the two-point rotate only checkbox. That tells Surf CE to ignore the scale factor that's generated by these two control points. I'm also going to disable the vertical on both of these points. I don't want to use them in a vertical calculation at all. So this looks great. I'll click on the Save button to save my localization. And Sir CE will ask me if I want to recalculate the raw file. Click on Yes. This scale factor is the inverse of the average scale factor that I computed by looking at the four corners. Click on the green check mark. This will recalculate all of the coordinates in my job. The red back and the red X. And now I can return to the main menu. And if I go to the Kogo tab, and inverse between point number one and point number two, you'll see that I've got coordinate values. They kind of look like state plane coordinates, but by removing the top digits, there's no question if they're state plane digits or not. Notice that the bearing between these two points is now zero. I wanted that. And you can also see that the ground to grid difference is the average scale factor. So the GPS measures 5283.672. We apply that average scale factor, which brings us to ground 5284.696. So that's all there is to it. I've matched the east line of the section and made it grid north. I have real elevations. I haven't affected those at all. I've used an average scale factor which best fits the four corners of this section. And it wasn't that difficult. If you've enjoyed this video, take a moment, check the subscribe button down below, and that way when I do the next video, YouTube will automatically put a blue dot by the new video or something and let you know that there's a new one. Thanks very much. If you have any ideas for more videos, don't hesitate to send them to me. Have a great survey day.